Greetings, traveler. Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to talk about leveling curves. Before we dive into all the different leveling curves, I want to establish what the goal is. When we know what we're trying to achieve, you're going to be able to evaluate which leveling curve will suit the situation the best. The goal you're trying to achieve by picking the right leveling curve is to enter the mid game with as good of a position as possible. For the purpose of this video, we're going to define the mid game as your nine gold turn. The first turns up until eight gold, in my opinion, are pretty straightforward. You're going to follow your leveling curve and then on the nine gold turn, that's where you're going to have much more freedom to choose what you're going to do. In that particular position, you want to have as good of a chance to have a good mid game. Now what decides whether you're going to have a good mid game or not? There's three factors you're going to look at. First is going to be your overall board strength and the health that you've saved as a result of being strong. The higher health, generally the better, the stronger your board is, you're going to have a lot more leeway. You're going to have flexibility. You might be able to go to tier five fast because you're healthy. So that's a very big one. The other one is economy. How much gold have you saved? How many units do you have on your board after your eight gold turn? Were you able to squeeze in a little extra buy here and there? Were you able to use an overconfidence and wind around and have a lot of extra money on that nine gold turn to have much more impact? And the last one is pairs. Do you have pairs? Do you have multiple pairs? Are they good pairs? Do you want to triple this unit? If you have the pairs that significantly increases your chance to find early direction in a game, which is always helpful. Being able to get a high tier unit ahead of your opponents is going to drastically increase the chance that you can win that lobby. So with that in mind, let's talk about which curve is correct in which situation. Standard curve. For this curve, you're going to want to level on turn two, turn three, you would like to buy two units. This is the five gold turn, so that's a little bit awkward seeing as units cost three gold. Oftentimes, you can get a little bit of help from the shop. You'll either get an economy unit like Shell Collector, Salamental, Scout, or your spell can be of use. You can get a hasty excavation to get an extra gold. You can get a chef, you can get a lasso, you can get a recruit, something to smoothen out the turn. The worst case scenario for standard curve is that you have to sell your starter unit to buy two two drops. The next turn, that's turn four, you'll buy two more units. This time it's very clean. It'll cost six gold and units are three. The seven gold turn is also very clean. You level to tier three. For four gold, you buy a unit for three. On the eight gold turn, that's turn six, you'll have one leftover gold after leveling to tier four. Oftentimes you'll try to get something like a careful investment or use a hero power that costs one gold. Sometimes you'll have a spell that costs two gold or a hero power that costs to gold and you have a leftover minion that's not very strong on your board. We're talking something like a droplet that you got from selling your Salamental earlier. You can now sell this to get a chef's choice to upgrade your board because otherwise you would just roll away that one remaining gold and that's not better than trying to upgrade a droplet into a potential four drop with the chef's choice. So you can use a little bit of foresight here on your seven gold turn. You could freeze a chef's choice or you could freeze a careful investment because you know that if you're leveling to tier four on the eight gold turn, you'll have one gold remaining that you would like to spend. Now, what are the strengths of the standard curve and when should you use it? Standard curve is fantastic because it hits all three of the aspects we talked about earlier. You'll generally have a lot of health remaining because you had no turn where you weren't really buying minions. You'll have a high chance for pairs because you spend a lot of time on tier two and you also have a reasonable economy because it's a very gold efficient curve. There's not a lot of gold floated, wasted. You should have a decent spread of minions on your board. You can have six or sometimes even seven minions when you do this curve and you're leveling to tier four. The reason why you shouldn't use standard curve sometimes, it's going to be either meta dependent or specific to your shops. Now, luckily for you guys, I intend to put out specific meta guidance on this. So if you're unsure what kind of a meta is this, check back into the channel and there very likely will be a video waiting for you. The reason you would not want to follow standard curve meta dependent is because two drops might suck. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you spend a lot of time on tier two to buy a lot of two drops. If they're not really good, then you don't really want to spend a lot of time on tier two. We've seen this in the past where people have preferred to stay on tier one longer because one drops were very good. This is when there was a lot of economy on tier one, which is currently not the case. The economy was moved to tier two in part to combat this problem, I would assume. In the current meta we have, there's a different problem. There's just very, very strong four drops. So there is a huge incentive to go to tier four faster at the time of this recording, which is patch 29.4, because there's cards like Chimera, 
Long John, Copper, Aranasi. These are cards that are so powerful that getting them a turn earlier is well worth disregarding all the good stuff Standard Curve has to offer. Be aware of that. Know what kind of a meta you're playing in before you're going to figure out what curve is good. I hope to be helping you out with that particular aspect of the decision making. The other one is more dependent on what you rolled. The very big factor for Standard Curve is turn three. Turn three is where you sort of make or break your Standard Curve you're either going to find good minions in the shop and a clean way of buying them. So what would be an example? You started with a Bonehead, which is just a tier one undead, and then you have a Nerubian Death Swarmer in the shop and a Chef's Choice. That's perfect. You're strong. The Death Swarmer is gonna buff the tokens. You're gonna be able to use the Chef's Choice on either the tokens or the Death Swarmer to try and make a pair and get even more undead and benefit from this Death Swarmer buff, which is just a great example of a good turn. Now, another example would be, I started with a generic minion and my shop has one drops <laughs> and my spell isn't much help either. Now, suddenly, if you were to sell your starter unit and buy two one drops, that is a horrible turn. You are still going to be taking damage. In the vast majority of cases, it is going to be correct to go into our next curve, which is a three on three. We'll cover that. You sell your starter units and then you go to tier three instead. So those are really the two big things why you wouldn't go standard curve. Either the meta is bad for it, there's bad two drops, or there's very strong one drops or three drops or four drops, or you just get a really bad turn three and you'll have to adjust. Three on three. This is where you're going to level on turn two and then again on turn three. So that is tier three on turn three, hence the name three on three. Turn four, you're going to buy two units, so preferably two three drops. Turn five, you're going to have one extra gold, so you can buy, roll, buy, or roll, buy, buy, or you can have a really good spell in your shop that you want to buy, and then it is just preferable to double buy and get the spell, so this can be an overconfidence, this can be a careful investment. Then on the eighth gold turn, you'll have a decision whether you want to stay on tier three and buy three really good three drops where you sell one unit, or you have a great spell in your shop, such as the staff that buffs the shop and then buy two good three drops, or you just level to tier four and buy one unit. What are the strengths of three on three and when should you use it? The strengths of three on three are fairly limited. You could compare this to one of those games where you just max out everything in one stat. That's what three on three does. Three on three does not get you a lot of economy because you have fewer units on average than other people. Three on three generally won't give you pairs because even though you've been on tier three for a longer time, there's fewer three drops in the pool than there are two drops and you'll play more for strength rather than pairs because you have to win your fights because you took a lot of damage, but you will have a strong board. That is the, the one real benefit of three on three because when the other players that have been playing standard curve or other curves, they've generally been buying one drops, two drops, whereas hopefully you as the three on three player have been buying three drops. So that means that your turn five, your seven goal turn where you buy two more three drops, your turn six, your eight goal turn where you're gonna level to tier four or buy two or three more three drops, that's where you're really a bully. That's where you're probably going to beat most other boards in the lobby at that stage of the game. That is a fairly limited amount of upside, which is why you don't really want to use this curve if you have a good turn three. So this is really a backup game plan that you have in case your turn three shop was so bad where you had to level. As with standard curve, there's obvious meta reasons as to why this curve becomes more or less appealing. If there are very good three drops, this curve becomes a lot better because now all of a sudden your chance to win and win big goes up significantly for your seven goal turn. Six goal turn, as we talked about, you only have two units, so that's not that great. But the seven goal turn, if the three drops are just fantastic, all of a sudden your chance to win goes up through the roof and now you're also taking that strength into the mid game where you might continue snowballing for quite a while. Yeah, you lost a lot of health early, but you're gonna recover so much that the people that stayed on two in a meta where the three drops are very strong are certainly gonna lose more health and they're gonna drop below you on the leaderboard and you will have more health even though you took so much damage early on. And then the other one is in game. If you don't have a good turn three shop, you will be losing regardless. So yes, tier three is not an ideal curve, on average, but it's a much better alternative than buying terrible cards on turn three because then you will still lose and you'll have bad cards. So now you have nothing. Whereas on tier three, you could still get good three drops and you might start recovering with a higher board strength. So that is the reason why we wanna use the three on three curve.
There is an additional curve that I will mention here that is a follow-up on the three-on-three -three curve, which is four-on-four. -four. Yes, that's tier four on turn four. The reason why this is something I'm going to cover very briefly is just for completionist's sake. It's also because you shouldn't attempt this curve. It's very difficult to play and you have an extremely limited window to recover. The only reason this is going to be available to you is because you either got hasty excavation for an extra gold or you rolled a deck swabby on turn one. Otherwise you simply won't have the gold to go to tier four on turn four because it'll be the six gold turn and leveling will be seven gold. The reason that you might want to attempt this is because you started with either the hasty excavation or deck swabby, you go to tier three and it's just all terrible. <laughs> so your two drops were bad, so you level to tier three, and now Bob is angry with you and has offered you a pile of garbage because you didn't think his two drops were good enough. In that case, you might be able to stabilize by going to tier four, because if you were to buy those bad three drops, you're probably going to have a bad game anyway. However, most of the time, you just take the chance and you roll or you buy a spell and you roll, like something like a chef's choice and roll can totally work out. Something like a scout where you buy a scout, you roll, then you sell the scout, so you have three gold, you still buy a unit, you'll have a one drop. There might be a little bit of synergy between the one drop and the, the three drop you're buying. Like let's say you get the, the reset on tier one, the, the mech that spawns a mech, and then you roll a deflecto, so you're like, oh, okay, that's kind of okay. The reality is you'll take so much damage that a lot of four on four games end in eight on eight. <laughs> <laughs> You're just dead. Yeah, there, there's a reason this curve is, is not very popular, but I'll throw it out there for completionist's sake. Fast four. For this curve, you're going to want to level on turn two, turn three, you're going to double buy. Turn four is where you level and, if possible, get a one cost spell because leveling will cost five gold out of six gold. Then on the seven gold turn, very straightforward, you level because the level costs seven gold. And then on the eight gold turn, you get to either sell a minion off your board and buy three minions from the shop, which is now on tier four, or you could roll to get two good minions, or you could have a combination of casting a spell, something like the staff that buffs the shop, and then you'll buff two four drops and, and buy those. So any combination of that will do. What are the strengths and when should you play it? The first thing to notice is that it's gonna be similar to three on three, where you'll be very strong on the eight gold turn because you're buying four drops instead of twos or threes, but you should have higher health than a three on three curve because you never had an empty board for leveling. That's a big deal. You won't really have a lot of economy compared to a different curve. You won't really have pairs compared to a different curve, but your strength is very high and you'll be able to buy four drops one turn earlier than other players, which is a huge deal, especially in the meta where four drops are very strong, which takes us to the next point. When should you use it? Meta dependent, same as the previous curves, when four drops are very good. It happens to be at the time of this recording that four drops are very good. So they're probably as strong as they've been in a, in a very, very long time. I can imagine a few other metas where four drops were this influential. That's just something that you're going to have to know, but I'll do my very best to put out these updates like, hey, it's a meta where four drops are strong or three drops are strong. Now, what are some examples of in the current meta? It'd be something like a Long John giving you economy and having a decent stat line. Aranasi just having this really big stat line dealing tons of damage. This, this unit just wins fights on its own. Chimera giving you free scaling. You know, there's there's tons of examples, but those are those are three one that comes to mind. Uh, so fast four is probably the best curve in the meta right now and the curve that you can follow quite often to great success. Now there is a detail here where you might go to tier three on the six gold turn where you level and buy a spell, but then on the seven gold turn, suddenly you just have this amazing shop. You can deviate from the plan, of course. Flexibility is key. So if you're offered say deflecto bot plus menace plus an overconfidence or a careful investment, fantastic, just take it. The whole point of the curve, as we mentioned earlier, is to be strong, be healthy, get pairs, put yourself in a good spot for the mid game. So if the shop is offering you exactly that, don't just close your eyes and be like, I was gonna level, I'll push the button anyway. Don't do that, flexibility is key. That's that's a caveat for this curve. You're totally fine to spend a turn on tier three if Bob is feeling generous and is just offering you the cram de la cram, beautiful three drops. In the game, when should you initiate this curve? Well, first of all, turn three, because you can't do this if you already leveled. So you need to stay on tier two because you had a good shop. 
So again, think of the chef's choice example. Then on turn four, the six gold turn, that's where the shop takes a bit of a different turn where you're not super happy with what you're seeing, but there is a one cost spell. So you're like, hmm, you know what? I'll level for five, I'll buy the spell, and then I'll take my chances next turn. So that's really how you're going to decide whether you do this curve, but that is meta independent. So let's say in a perfect world, every tier is perfectly balanced, there's nothing that really stands out, then you're just gonna purely rely on what the shop offers you. We rarely live in a meta such as that. So most of the time you're gonna have an inherent bias to, well, unless the shop is really good, I will do X, right? So and in this case, in this particular meta we find ourselves in, unless you're getting clear signals from the shop that it's a good, time to go three on three. So like your shop is terrible on three, or it's really good to do a standard curve because your two drops are just very synergistic. You get your pairs, you get your money, you get everything. Then you're going to lean towards the curve that is gonna get you to four as fast as possible, which is aptly named fast four. Chief curve. For this curve, you're going to buy on turn two instead of leveling. Then on turn three, you're going to level to tier two and also buy a unit. Now you will need to either have bought a coin on the last turn or you will need a deck swabby to be able to do this. You can imagine it splitting into three different directions from this particular point. Originally, chief curve was used to go straight to tier three on turn four because leveling will cost six gold and you will have six gold on that turn, so it's pretty clean. However, you can choose to move into the standard curve from this position if you have a great shop on six gold. Let's say you just have two, two, like you get two eternal knights and you're just like, you know what? That's pretty good. Let me just buy two eternal knights. That means that on the seven gold turn, you'll have to sell one of your one drops to be able to level and buy another two drop, or you can just get something like a chef's choice or a lasso to fix your curve. And now you just move ahead like you just used the standard curve. That's option number one. Option number two is you follow the normal chief curve, which is you level to tier three on six gold, and then you move into tier three where you start buying good three drops. So essentially, again, you're just gonna check the shop. If the shop has great three drops, let's go ahead and buy them. And that means that on the eight gold turn, you can either choose to sell a unit to level and buy, or again, you could get lucky, get a chef's choice, get a lasso to fix your curve because leveling will cost you six, which means you'll have two gold left over, need an extra gold to buy a unit for three. Or you can choose to stay on tier three and just again, spend your eight gold by buying a spell and two units if the shop is very good. And then the last option is you move into fast four, which means on the seven gold turn, you just click the button again and you level and all of a sudden, you're on the fast four track. So Jeep curve is a curve that has lots of flexibility attached to it. You can choose to go wherever you want, whatever makes the most sense based on the shops you're being offered. Let's talk about the strengths of Jeep curve and when you'll want to play it. The first one is what we already touched upon. Jeep curve has great flexibility. If you get good two drops, you can buy those. If you get good three drops, you can buy those. If you don't get anything, you can go straight to four. Very, very flexible, allows for a lot of agency to the player. You can really choose what to do based on your shops. The other advantage is that Jeep Curve has a higher chance for you to have a pair because you get to stay on tier one for three buys. You'll buy on turn one, two, and three, and those will all be one drops. So the chance for you to have a pair is much higher than in a lot of the other curves we've covered so far. When do you want to use Jeep Curve? The first thing that needs to be present is you need to get a shop that enables Jeep Curve on turn one or turn two. What do we mean with that? In order for Jeep Curve to work, you need an extra gold. So you will need to get either coin as your spell on turn one or turn two, get a turn one, you can freeze it, or you will need swabby because this will allow you to level on turn three for two gold and still buy a unit because you'll have five gold total. If you do not have either of these, you should not chief curve because you will be very weak. You'll only have two minions and they'll both be one drops. So don't do that. The other requirement I would say is for you to be happy with the one drops you're buying. Sure, I can buy a non pair of, sorry, or I could even buy a pair of sun bacon relaxers and then with a coin I can level, but what's the point? I'm not strong, I'm taking a lot of damage, it's not a triple I want. So what would be a good example? You're playing a Deathwing. This is actually an example that Jeef made in his curve video. Shout out, I'm sure we can put a link somewhere. You have a Deathwing and you open up a pair of Anoyatrons or any other Divine Shield that might be present on tier one at the time. And you have the coin to make the curve work. So now you can start buffing two Divine Shields very early on. Another example could be I have a pair of deck swabbies, which is a really good triple to hit. And I'm also making my curve a little bit better because now I can level to tier two, right? For the two gold and still buy a unit. And then if I play the deck swabby on that turn, now suddenly I could move into standard curve without needing an extra 
for gold at all. I, I now have a pair of deck swabbies, which is an excellent triple, and it didn't come really at an extra cost because I can still level for four gold on the seven gold turn and buy a unit for three. You need to be really enticed by the one drops in the shop, and you need to have a gold in the form of coin or deck swabby in order to make this curve work. Very important. Rough farm curve. For this one, we're gonna go all the way back to when Rafam was originally released because this was the first time there was any use for this curve. This is inherently not a good curve. It only makes sense if you have a one cost hero power that you want to use in the early game. So hence Rafam curve. On turn two, you're going to buy a card and hero power. That's the four gold turn, very clean. Five gold turn for Rafam is a little bit weird. You're generally gonna buy a unit, roll, and then hero power. So you waste one gold rolling, but it can help you find a better shop and, and you can freeze that one. Then on the six gold turn, it's very clean. You're gonna level for two gold, four gold left, buy a unit for three, hero power for one, mm, beautiful. Seven gold turn, you're gonna be able to level for six gold and then hero power, and then you can level to tier four and hero power, perfect gold spent. What are the strengths for the reform curve and when do you wanna use it? The strengths for the reform curve lie in having pairs. You'll have tons of pairs most of the time when you're playing reform curve because you're on tier one for a very long time the longest time for any of the curve we've seen so far. Many, many of the times you'll actually have a triple ready in the shop frozen for you to cash in for a higher tier minion whenever you would like. Historically, a lot of the time this has been going for a six drop, but most of the time it's at least going to be a five drop. The other benefit is that you'll have very high economy because the reform curve is very efficient in terms of generating gold because on turn two, you'll hero power to steal a minion and you'll buy a minion from the shop. Turn three, you'll do the same thing. Turn four, you'll do the same thing. So that's a lot of cards generated. Most curves won't be able to generate that many minions throughout the turns. So you have a lot of gold to work with. The huge downside is that you will have fairly low board strength because you're getting a lot of one drops. So that is the huge, huge turnoff here. And that is why you would almost never want to play Rafam Curve on a hero that's not Rafam, Maev, or, you know, to some extent, Eudora. Most heroes would rather just follow a normal curve and use their one cost hero power later on. It's just Rafam and Maev, and again, to some extent, Eudora, that really benefit from being able to use that hero power early on because they can then spike with the triple later on. So that's really what you're trying to achieve. If you don't have a triple playing Rafam or Maev, you're in trouble. So you really, really want to try and hit that. That's really the main reason you want to do that. Aside from being Rafam or Maev, this is also a little bit meta dependent. We've had metas where tier one was very, very good. So similar to standard curve, you only really want to, you know, do that all the time if you have a lot of strong two drops. So is the same with Rafam and Maev. You don't really want to pick a ton of Rafam and Maev if the one drops aren't great. And right now we're in a meta where that's the case. There's very, very limited economy on tier one. The one drops aren't particularly strong either. So there was a time where we had, I'm going to sound like a grandpa doing this, but back in my day, we had Murloc Tidehunter. We had Alley Cad. These were minions that not only did they provide economy because you'd get two bodies for the cost of one unit, you would also be able to triple both the main body and the token. So it wasn't uncommon for these heroes, Rafamaev, to have multiple six drops coming out on nine gold, 10 gold. So those were really the glory days of tier one when both of those cards were in. Now that a lot of the economy has left tier one, I would say that these heroes are a little bit more on the fringe and even something like a Maev, very often I'll just level on turn two and I'll just use the hero power later on. So that's a little bit more advanced, a little bit more high level, but that, that's just something to keep in mind. Feel free to play a Rafam or a Maev and use this curve, but currently at the time of recording this video, it's not ideal. Warrior Curve. I'm going to touch on this very briefly because as of the time of this recording, this curve is dead. You shouldn't use it, but it was very good back in its day. You would stay on tier one all the way up until seven gold. That's turn five. So that's five turns on tier one. Then you would level for one gold, sell a unit off your board or use a coin or what have you, and then level again. So you would level straight from tier one to tier three in one turn. Now, the reason you would do that is because this curve has statistically the highest chance to find triples. You would use that back when you had cards such as Nest Matron, Lightspawn, and we had really, really good Avenge 
cards on tier one, such as Acolyte of Cthulhu, I believe it was called. It's been that long. So this could be game winning, especially on a hero such as Reno on seven gold. Oh, you triple. Oh, you level. Oh, it's a four drop. Oh, it's a light spot. I make a golden light spot. Oh, I have two Acolytes of Cthulhu on my board. Oh my God, I'm getting so much scaling. This was a thing. There were whole tournaments decided by who tripled into a light spot on seven gold and who didn't. Just for completionist's sake, I'll mention that this was once a very popular curve, but as we discussed already in this video, tier one is much weaker than it once was. Not a lot of economy, so not a lot of cards you would want to triple. It's not that important that you triple into these four drops now. It's totally fine to just level and get them one turn later. Because if you compare it to the fast four curve, the warrior curve would get the four drop on seven gold as you level and cash in your triple. The fast four gets a one turn later, which in the case of a nest matron or light spawn, especially if you have a good event setup, matters. But in a meta where you just want strong four drops, it's much better to just be on tier four and be able to buy lots of them so there you go warrior curve that was it for my curve video i hope you guys found this very useful if you did please let us know in the comments it's highly appreciated see you next time